And welcome back to The Bloated Chef. Hey, before we get started here, let's do us a favor. Find us on YouTube. That would be The Bloated Chef LLC. Go ahead and click that like button. While you're there, please smash down on that subscribe button. We're heading towards 1,000 subscriptions. We're trying to do some nice charity work when we get there. And while you're there, share as well. We thank you. And by back, I mean, of course, the big butcher block board. I've got beautiful thin shaved island round roast beef. I've got two kiwi, one pear. I have got chili flakes, ginger, sesame seeds, lime juice, sesame oil, mirin wine, fish sauce. Are you feeling this? Kalbi beef, Korean style. Let's move on to the marinade itself. In goes our kiwi and our pear. Now both of these contain an enzyme called actinidin, which is a dual threat, if you will. It's great at softening and tenderizing proteins, especially red meat, but it also serves as an excellent digestive aid. So we got that going for us, which is nice. Unless you want to talk about polysaccharide and oligosaccharide metabolisms. Yeah, I didn't think so. Moving right along, we've added all our sesame seeds, our ginger, our ground ginger. There goes a couple, two, three, five bulbs of garlic. I'm going to round this out with a little bit of acidity from the lime juice, about a teaspoon. Next, we'll go with our cayenne honey, going a little bit off the rails here, but then again, that's what we do. The ever-present fish sauce, that's about 24 shakes. We'll call that a teaspoon and a half. In goes sesame oil and this has to be a nice toasted sesame oil and then we'll finish this out with some mirin wine and of course some dark soy sauce my own moving on the ninja has done its work smells fantastic we're gonna give it a quick taste I just went ahead and licked the top and it's yummy I want to see how thick or thin it is and it looks to be right on the money all right, next up, we marinate. We put about a tablespoon on top, about a half a pound of thin shaved eye round of beef, plenty of marbling, so there's enough veins of fat that will pull that marinade in. We're gonna give that about 20 minutes, come back and see how it looks. And of course, as you guessed it, we're gonna put more on. How about another, we'll call it two teaspoons. Boom, let's get that mixed up and we will move on to our next protein. We will seal that tight, chuck it in the fridge, and let it sit overnight. Minimum 12 hours, but overnight's good. Next protein, here it is. That's a whole eye round, which I have gone ahead and butterflied. Yeah, we want to keep this thin, because we're going to throw this on the grill. We are not, I repeat, we are not going to sous vide this. Because of the enzymes and their productivity when it comes to softening proteins, we're going to let that just do its work overnight. All right, so in it goes. And we'll take the rest of that Colby marinade. Stuff that smells great. I, I really wish you could smell it. We're gonna seal that bag like we always try to do. Push all the air out as best you can. One of these days, I'm gonna buy one of those fancy machines. But for now, fold it over, fold it over. Keep pressing, keep pressing, keep turning. Keep folding it over, keep pulling. Do the scrunchy. don't forget the scrunchy. And now you zip this thing shut. And that's going to sit overnight as well. Right about 10 hours later, it's a beautiful day here in GA. There goes a little extra virgin olive oil. We've got enough sesame oil there. We don't want it to dominate everywhere. We get that wok nice and hot. As you can see, that oil is shimmering. In goes our slices, marinated in that beautiful Colby marinade. You can see the sear, hear the sear. It should take about two to three minutes per batch. We don't want to crowd the pan, obviously. And we'll move that along. All right, a mere two to three minutes later, a quick flip over, make sure all sides are seared, and we pull it. Now from here, I thought, man, let's make a nice banh mi out of this meat. But the other half of me said, you don't have anything for banh mi ingredients. So we're doing like we do up there in Boston. We'll go with a top split grilled New England hot dog bun. 
get some more of that juice on there flavor this baby up and let's get into this Oh, man. I mean, I don't want to... Phase two of this fantastic food tutorial finds us on the grill. I've got some well-soaked hickory chunks. I've got my starter chimney. Those coals are ready. We will add that to the far. Now then, let's get a gander at that eye round. Butterflied out. Look how well it took to that marinade. Yes, this is going to be yummy. And since I have such a nice fire going, we're going to do a version of beer can chicken. We're going to call it energy can chicken. That's right. Very popular brand. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, it rhymes with Ned Wool. Anyways, small two-pound birds, two to the pack. Quite simply, cut some jerk paste with some Greek dressing and let them marinate for two days. Ah, the boys are frolicking. It is, after all, a beautiful fall day here in Georgia. And back to the birds. Okay, we'll crack open a cold brew. We'll drink half of it, and we'll add half to the bottom of the pan, because what's going to happen with this liquid is that's going to be set underneath the birds, and any drippings will get caught in that liquid. We'll make a nice little demi-gloss, okay? Now, here comes some jerk paste. If you want to know the recipe, look back at my jerk recipe tutorial. Let's get all the measurements and everything. We're just basically going to rub and dab and make sure that every part of this outside of the bird gets covered with this little bit of paste. All right, making sure our wings are tucked behind. We now place our catch pan in next to the fire, close to the flame. We're going to set our birds down on the indirect heat, and that's going to catch all that. What do you think? Is that fire about ready? I'm thinking yes. All right, so here we go. Birds on the indirect portion of our heat. Move it a little close to the far and let that skin start to render. 10 minutes later, we check on our birds and those are looking beautifully tanned right now. Perfect fire, down goes our meat. Put some nice grill marks on those and while we have this open, let's go ahead and get some basting done up under the wings, in between the legs and thighs. Don't forget the breastesses. Right about four to five minutes later, we'll go ahead and check to see what our grill marks are looking like. Beautiful. Flip that over for about two to three more minutes. Shut it down again. And four to five minutes after that, we're going to check our grill marks, check our doneness. And I'm thinking this bad boy's done, so we're talking a little bit less than maybe 10 to 12 minutes tops. Okay, we'll pull that off, let that rest. And now we start nudging those birds a little closer to the flame. Giggity, giggity, all right. That steak is rested. Let's slice it in half. And now we'll start slicing each half. It looks like we've nailed this medium rare towards the medium side. Perfect. All right, let's get into this. Let's get a little taste. What do you say? What say you? Oh, nope, I'm gonna need a little bit more. Sorry. Yeah, let's sop that up. Let's get a little taste again. Oh, tangy, sweet. A Little bit heat. Yummy. All right. And with the leaf blowers in the background, we're gonna go ahead and baste even more. Look at the coloration. Why is that so beautifully colored? Because we're basting. That's correct. Look at these lovely ladies, huh? And right about 30 minutes full. We are done. Now, look at these. My goodness, the color, the caramelization. And watch how easy that just slides right up. And then, of course, it wouldn't be complete without one of these things sticking. In which case, you just knock the thing over anyways. No big whoop. Now then, last little treat. 
we'll take a little bit of that fat that's fallen into the can, a little bit of that energy drink, flavored quite nicely. We'll get that on there and let that skin render, absorb, and then eventually crisp back up again. How about these? How about these? All right, oh, yeah. time to do a little nip and tuck, a little nip and cut. As the shadows have taken over now, we'll go right down the middle of that breastplate. Boom, snap that, go right down now, right down the spine, as close to the spine as you can. You want to get more bone and not so much chicken. Don't throw that spinal cord away. With the neck, a lot of good eating in there. And check this bad boy out. Leftover arroz con pollo, chicken and rice for the layman. All right, we'll grab our cut pieces. There goes the breast. Here goes the leg and thigh. Holy cow, that looks good. One little wingy right on top. And just for shits and giggles, we'll take a little bit of that liquid. Voila. Enjoy. Right, ladies and genitals, thank you so much for watching. Do me a favor, please don't forget to click on that big subscribe button, slap down on that like button, drop a comment in the comment section, and maybe even share with your friends. Thanks so much.